Okay, the next thing we're going to model is a drum tower, which is a tower that is built into the wall and usually about equal height as the wall. So what we're going to do is we're using the concentric wall as a template. And we're actually going to use the wall itself, which we've already created, and join it into the tower, which we're going to build, a square tower in this case. And we're going to copy and paste that over. And that should be good right there. We're going to center it. And there's one thing here where we have them not meeting up right here and we do want them to. What we're going to do is still creating our sections that we could butt up against each other. We're going to take this accent right here and just to remove it and then take these points and butt them up to the end just like we have right here. Okay. And we're going to center it again. But we want what's going to be the tower to be centered. And it looks like we need to zoom in just a little. Looks like that's going to be centered. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to select the allure and the part of the wall right here. And just to kind of take a look at the curve. Okay, that's good. We're going to create a box now for the tower. And we want this to meet up perfect. And we might have to zoom in quite a ways to get it perfect. And it's not going to be quite perfect, but it's going to be pretty close. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to knife the new tower where these lines are at.
Okay, and now what we're going to need to do is match up the angle that we have here. And that looks about right. And that looks about right. And the bottom needs to come out just a little to match up. And just a little on the sides right here. Now by doing that we have a, a gap. And what we're going to do is just select the points on both sides and pull them in. But we also have the points of the uh, Merlin selected, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is just go in and deselect the Merlin points. be a little easier in this view. And now we have to differentiate which points are part of the Merlin and which are not. So we're just going to use the drag tool to find out. And it looks like we merged those together. And let's just find out here. Okay, we're going to cut the Merlins. or hide them using the minus key. We'll just hide them from right now. And now we can select the points. No problems. And we'll go in. And that should take care of it. And it does. And that looks pretty good. Okay. If we use the backslash key, then we can unhide the Merlins. We can see them again. And now what we have to do is get the allure to match up with the walls. And in order to do that, we're going to delete the allures that we already have. Except this part right here, we're going to leave that. But we're going to select these. And we're going to cut them and paste them so we can use this as a template. And now we need to select the points to create one continuous polygon. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I want to match up this, so I'm going to use bevel. And it should come up 
right to that edge on both sides. And then we want to make sure it's not going down at all. And we're going to delete it. And we're also going to need to knife it right where the start of the old allure is. And actually we can delete all these, not just the ones for the allure. because they are all inside. And we can delete that bottom polygon. Okay, and that's exactly what we want. And we'll get we'll move these inward in just a minute because we're going to be adding those to the outside of this as well. But right now, we're going to maximize the viewport. And if you were wondering how I've been doing that before, I'm using the zero key in the number pad. And when you move the cursor over whatever viewport and hit that zero key, it will maximize that viewport. Okay, I'm going to select the points in order. And let's see. There's going to be a slight problem right here, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this tower and paste it. And we're going to weld these points together. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and select them in order. If you have a middle mouse button, you can do this to select points, which is what I always do, which is probably the easiest way when you're selecting individual points because you can just click. And if you don't have a middle mouse button, I would recommend investing in getting one. Even one with the scroll that clicks is usually worth not having one. Okay, and hit P. And now we have our polygon. Alright, and now we can start to bevel this. And we want to match up to the old allure. And that looks pretty nice. And we've created some polygons on the side here, so we're going to delete those. Okay. And we're going to delete those on the other side as well. And then one definite thing we need to do is stretch these points so that they match up with that line. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And move that inward. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And we'll show you why later in layout. But right now, that looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and take 
these accents and we're going to move them inward Looks like we're going to have to individually sec the polygons for this. But we still don't have that bottom one, so we're going to switch to wireframe and see if we can grab it from there. And we only want it going to that edge, so it looks good right there. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And now we're just going to use the same trim by copying this and bringing it over. And if you're also wondering how I'm selecting one polygon of an object and selecting the whole thing, I'm using the right bracket key, which is select connected. We'll copy and paste that. And just how much is that going over the other part? And quite a bit. We want to make sure we match that up. Okay. I'm going to try to center that. We're going to cut this and paste this onto another layer so we can work with it a lot more easier. And we're going to knife that in the corner. And knife this one like a corner. And then just take these points and rotate them 90 degrees. And do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and rotate these 90 degrees and then just pull them over. And zoom in just a little there. And we'll check the other side to see how close it is. And since we already have those beveled, we're going to leave those the way they are, and they should look alright. And we'll take a look. And that blends pretty nicely. Okay, now we're just going to add Merlins along this section right here, and we're not really going to worry about angling around the corners. Alright. 
and we'll grab a Merlin with all of its accents. Making sure you do it in polygon mode, because otherwise you won't be able to copy everything over, only the points. And we'll copy and paste that. Should we drag that all the way to the end? And we're going to mirror. And then select all these polygons from the two Merlins. Making sure we select just the polygons from the Merlins. and then mirror it once again so we get it on both sides and we can delete the old allure and now one thing you could definitely do is like when we were working on the gatehouse before uh, the way we created the corner polygons, or the corner merlins, by knifing the polygons through the center. You could definitely do that for this, and it would probably look a lot better. But we just wanted to show you how to, right now, just get the allure connected by adding a tower in here. And we're going to rename that. To allure. And now we also need to add our corbels still. So what we're going to do is this should be named the strip. And we can cut it and then paste it in. And grab a set of our corbels. And we're going to copy and paste those into a new layer so we can work with them. Now we're just going to have two here. We're going to go ahead and mirror. And then mirror it again. And we'll see how that looks. Oh, that looks good. So we're going to cut it. Paste it. And now we have a square drum tower built into one of our walls. It's going to add a lot more variation. It's going to look a lot nicer once we start piecing the whole cast together and lay out. And before we do that I might go ahead and clean these up and add maybe corner Merlins on it, but for right now for the tutorial I just wanted to show you the idea how to get the Allura connected and how to get all this connected. So we're gonna go ahead and save this and we're gonna call it Drum Tower Wall Square. And there we go.